come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast. It comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination, which you can help us out with by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Michaela. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin. Sean, but with explosions. Yeah. <laughs> Kapow, pow, in slow motion. <laughs> Explosions yeah. are silent. Yeah. 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 Double Sean. fisting I'm gun. slow motion, Sean, tonight. <laughs> right. Sean. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Holly. Holly, uh, what do we watch tonight? Where do we go tonight? Tonight we went to Nolans. Nolans. <laughs> went to Nolans. It is the 30th anniversary uh, of Hard Target. Hard, hard target. target. So that would mean it was ah, from the year... 1993. I am 30 years old. Holy cow. Yeah. Directed by... John Woo. Jonathan Woo. <laughs> woo woo. <laughs> yeah. And starring... Jean-Claude Van Damme. Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> A cadre of people, but Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yes. The former uh, breaking. Break yeah. answer. <laughs> yeah. Break in breakout star, yeah. yeah. Turned uh, Hollywood action hero. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in, mullet connoisseur. Yeah. yeah, right, yeah. Well, in this movie, I mean, holy cow, that uh-huh. is yeah. a mullet. I mean, it, we're talking yeah. about like the mullets of that era, but like, what was the last one we saw? Like, like Brian, Brian Bosworth and yeah, Stone the Cold. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's, it's comparable to, I think, um, Chuck Norris had... Yeah. A oh, yeah. mullet like yeah. that. I forgot. Yeah. Also a Black Duster in whatever movie yeah. he was in for that one. Uh, the Hitman. I think it was a Hitman. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> this one's well oiled. <laughs> yes. Well yes. oiled. There's a, there's a slick. <laughs> it looks like it. We, we couldn't decide if it was like Jerry Curl grease or if it was that like Aussie scrunch and go spray that you would like spray on and then mm. scrunch up with your hands and it, it'll kind of get that like curl. It ha- Probably from LA it looks looks. like yeah. it has that cr- that, that crunch, crunch. Yeah, but it's shiny. But it's than shiny. That. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So a little bit of both, man. I, yeah. LA looks. You're probably yeah. right. Probably something yeah, probably for right. the LA looks. Yeah. It feels yeah. like it is impressive and light flows. Yeah, yeah. He's got a curtain of hair yeah. and, down back here. and the cinematography really captures it yeah, highlights yeah, it. yeah, yeah. it's spectacular did you look up russell carpenter the dp on this movie because he did some very good work i thought on this but i'm like not did. sure I what else I took any notes on it because because yeah, it seems but that's like kind I've of a john Moo thing right like john Moo's cinematography is always kind of like like this um i'm trying to I mean, like, well, you know, I, I like credit the lighting and all that, yeah. basically, to, to yeah. Russell Carpenter. You know, where you're right. going to put the camera is probably a collaborative thing. Shot right. Avatar. The new there you go. Oh, yeah, he's James he's, Cameron's guy. Yeah, that's right. Say, okay. He's yeah, done yeah. a lot. I remember that. So that's the most recent one. Yeah. Yeah. And this movie was produced by Sam Raimi. Um, right. And um, yes. Ted Raimi shows up because he mm-hmm. does and all those Sam yep. Raimi produced things. Um, he also shot The uh, Return so, of Xander Cage. So what you're saying, Colin, is... Doves are to John Woo what Ted Raimi is to Sam Raimi. Yes. <laughs> well, Ted's, yeah. in, Ted's in this. Yeah, Ted's that's what. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying though. Yeah. Like I'm saying, yeah, John Woo always has doves in oh, his right. movies. Yeah. Sam Raimi always has Ted Raimi in his movies. Yeah, <laughs> just walking yeah. by. That's how yeah. you can tell. It's like, yeah. well, it was a dove. So, yep. you, so Woo's here. Yeah. yeah. There's a there's a Ted there's a Raimi. Raimi so, so it's Sam. Sam yeah. Raimi's here. So do we have to go back in time and tell the folks at home uh, about John Woo and why John why this is a significant movie in John Woo's filmic oeuvre. <laughs> You love that the word. Oeuvre. I do. The oeuvre of John Woo. You love that word. I think it comes in handy with the southernness of this movie. When was the last time the we oeuvre. did a John Woo movie? Was it Broken Arrow? Did we do Broken Arrow? Yeah, we did. Yeah. We yeah. did do Holly Arrow. brought it like brought a it. year ago, maybe? Yeah. yeah, it wasn't that long ago. Was it? It, it seems like two like years it was, yeah, ago. It was I don't know. Was, know. Time flies. Who yeah. knows? Um, time it, doesn't matter. Yeah, to me you'll anymore. look back at a past podcast and be like, we did that. But we watched it down here, though, so it was post pandemic. Yeah. 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 So, uh, he, yeah, this, he, this was his big, like, U.S. movie. Yeah, because he had been famous, I think, like, in at least indie film and art house. It mm-hmm. was for The Killer and Hard Boiled. Yes. Mm, Hard Boiled. Those movies with Chow Yun Fat that basically uh-huh. established who John Wu is. Uh, so, Hard Boiled, if I remember correctly, has like a 10, is it a 10 minute single take 
shootout yes through was it a hospital or a department store i think it was a hospital I think it's a hospital yeah, yeah. it's Damn. impressive yeah <laughs> it just I was, keeps on going i had forgotten about that movie and when i was reading about this one i was like man we need to watch that just for that scene yeah mm-hmm. yeah. yeah i mean that's what i really remember about yeah. that movie is the like i like the killer better but yeah. hard boiled was the one that was like this one's gonna have hmm. 10,000 bullets. It was like <laughs> yeah. one cop, one bad guy, 10,000 bullets. I think it might have been the tagline. That's a great uh, tagline. <laughs> and there was a sequel to uh, Hard Boiled. It was a video game called Stranglehold that John Woo supposedly directed. And oh, is that what Charlie that is? Fat. Yeah. Okay. I was trying to think of what you would call a sequel to Hard Boiled. Stranglehold. Like, like Overboiled. I think I remember or- that game. <laughs> yeah. I remember a game with, with Chow Yun Fat. Yeah, that was the sequel that, yeah. Huh. It, if you bought the certain edition, came with Hard Boiled. Oh, movie, nice. You know, and yeah. Fantastic. That's the kind of promotion I love. So, John Woo comes yeah. to America. Yeah, because the, yeah, the killer was, it was big, but it wasn't. I mean, this was what really put his name on the map. This got a lot of attention. Yeah, I guess as he was trying to make a like film fans knew who he was. Right. So this is a big right, deal. Yes. for Like if you knew who he was, it's like, oh, he's making yes, a movie. Film connoisseurs knew who he was. But like the average film goer, this is their introduction to him. Right. Yeah. And he would go and he, his first American movie he wants to make with Jean Claude Van Damme. The no, that's from not Brussels. who he wanted oh, to make okay. it with. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to make it with Kurt Russell. Oh, did he? Oh, he that would have been awesome. Hmm. He was he was uh, otherwise engaged. Was that for this particular script, or just he wanted to work with Kurt Russell? This script, okay. he wanted Kurt Russell for this. And the studio said, "Well." Kurt's busy, but we got this other guy, yep. Jean Claude Van Damme, who's trying to get out of the hell of canon films, right? Which it feels like this is how JCVD is always cast. Is someone they had someone else in mind? They're like, but he's available. Like, it seems like that's how it always goes down. <laughs> that, yeah, that's always like that's always the agent who's got both clients. Yes, like, he's 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 busy right now. But you know who we do got? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who do I got to do to get you into this JCVD today? Right. You know? what, yeah. what do I help me help you? What do I got to do? Yeah. So you drive off the lot yeah. in this brand new JCVD. Yes, <laughs> but this isn't like a bad matchup, right? Because no, no got, not at all. No, because I mean, JCVD Dan can throw a, a fucking kick. Like, yeah. You, you don't want a know? caddy. We got a Buick, right? here <laughs> take the buick yeah he's a very physical actor so of course then you know probably the the movie was altered at that or the script you know whatever it was doing in development like we got John they Clyde cut Bandit. half the lines for that character they're like we won't need these but imagine how amazing Kurt Russell's hair would have been in this movie, oh, though. Oh, yeah. You know? Glorious. Would he have also had the mullet? I don't know. I, I don't hope know. so. Yeah, I wonder if that's written into the script, yeah. I would hope. I mean, but realistically, like, thinking of the fight scenes, I think they got the casting right for yeah, this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. What they ended up doing. Yeah. Um, so we were talking about the script. Do you know who wrote this movie? Uh, I do. It, um, I wrote it down. Oh, Chuck Farr. Yeah. yeah, and Shuck. he was, because um, we did one of his movies before. We did. We did um, Dark Man. Oh. We, well, yeah, he wrote Dark we Man. We did Dark uh-huh. Man. Oh, and he also this, did, he did. Okay, uh, this felt it. Virus. Remember oh, yeah, virus, virus with. I did write that down. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. He did virus. So there's a couple linkages to Dark Man mm-hmm. here. Um, about virus. Vi- so yeah. Arnold Vosloo played Dark Man in two sequels. Yeah, in Dark Man Two and Dark Man Three, <laughs> and he's in this movie. Yep. Uh, Farrar was the ex Navy SEAL who started writing movies in Hollywood and wrote Navy SEALs. Oh which no, we still haven't brought to this show. He so he's the infamous <laughs> Navy SEALs writer. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, he was yeah. a Navy SEAL. Okay. And then he started writing movies. Like- he also wrote the the Jackal and Barbed Wire. Yeah, oh. Barbed Wire. Oh my God, has that barbed been brought wire. to the? No, no. it's been. Oh my list. God. It's been on my list. Barbed wire has been on my list, especially. I just watched the Pam Anderson documentary on yeah, Netflix, yeah. and I'm like, oh, we gotta watch. Doesn't that yeah. movie wire. take place in 2017? Mm-hmm. Right? I think so. Yeah. The yeah. future of yep. 2017. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I think I remember that because doesn't the movie start with like it was the year 2017, the worst year of my life, and I was like, <laughs> relatable. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Get that. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, who is Jean Claude Van Damme in this movie? Chance. <laughs> He is Chance Boudreau. <laughs> <laughs> Chance Boudreau. Chance. Chance. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and who is he? Uh, That's um, a good question. A Colin. seaman. Who is he? He's a seaman. Merchant. He's merchant seaman. Yeah. Merchant seaman. I feel like he's <sighs> nearly homeless. Yeah. He's uh, yeah. Nearly he's homeless. like a he's vagrant. A drifter. Which yeah. do they yes. still do this whole like the high plains drifter? 
Yeah, do they still do this whole like on the waterfront like sailor union thing? I was wondering Can, that. You, was, you wander down like, and be like, like where's for work Marlon today? Brando? What is happening yeah, right now? I was thinking the same I thing. I didn't know that was still a thing. This is such a foreign concept to me. The idea that yeah. you just walk to a location and the, it, they'll be work. like, here's your job for today. Like, yeah. It's wild. Yeah, I mean, they do stuff like that in different union industries, but yeah. usually I think now it's electronic and there's boards and you right. can sign up. And, and they'll yeah. send you an email. Yeah, yeah. And you where you're going, going in the, in the right. morning. Yeah. You don't yeah. got to walk down yeah. to the dock. You don't yeah. actually have to. And it's like, yeah, who do you know who's on this job and all that stuff? Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I yeah. love On the Waterfront. It's a great movie. Yeah. Well, yeah, like is. a scene from On the Waterfront, yeah. uh, Van Damme has to go and get passage on it to get employment. That's all the problem there, though. He punched his last captain in the face and threw him overboard. Yeah, yeah. but for a good reason, for right? Because that guy was, uh, I can't smuggling. remember. Yep. Was, smuggling yeah. heroin. I but we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Truly. In this story. Truly. Well, he's going to yeah. need some money to get on that boat. Yes. That's going to But there was a cold open to this movie. Our, yes. There's, yeah. There's a cold open to this movie. So. All right. So what's going on here? What was our cold open? Arrows flying through yeah. the yeah. Oh, yeah. running through yes. the streets of New Orleans. Yeah. Deserted French Quarter. Yeah. In 1993 at night. And being pursued by shadowy figures on motorcycles mm-hmm. armed with arrows. arrows. Bows and arrows. Bows and arrows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Guns of every kind. Steel Ex- arrows. Uh, steel arrows. Guns with exploding bullets. Mm-hmm. And at this mm-hmm. point, like, you're still early in the movie, but you're introduced to the John Woo style, which is like, so what What do we know? Like, I mean, what makes a John Woo movie a John Woo movie? We can cut to slow motion at any moment. Yeah, any moment. Even if it's a mullet twirling mm-hmm. in the wind, it'll be slow-mo, you know? Yeah. And I like it. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what I... Well, and shots from every angle. Yeah. When, when I every think angle. of John Woo, I think of the scene in Face Off when the kid gets shot on the merry-go-round. Because like that, <laughs> they build that up to the, so much, so many slow-mo cuts back to just people standing and pointing and looking. Mm-hmm. And then the you see the bullet and the merry-go-round. It is like the most sinister shit ever. Mm-hmm. But also, like, it goes on for so long that it loops back around being funny, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. If not for any other reason than Nicolas Cage's mustache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is that, like, a thing, I guess, like, his style? Now we're 30 years on from, yeah. like, you know. Yeah. And obviously, John Woo is still working, we mm-hmm. believe, right? He returned to uh, mainland China. Uh, and made the Red Cliff, which is this big historical action, yeah, like Series five almost, hours long, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when great. Hollywood didn't go so well for him, because I think Wind Talkers with Nicholas Cage, oh, yeah. overperform, and Paycheck with Ben Affleck didn't do very well, and so no. he was like, okay, but he gave us some good movies. In he there. did. <laughs> Although we almost ruined the Mission Impossible franchise. With Mission yeah, Impossible that 2. Was, if I that was just like too much. His style was like too much for the Mission Impossible franchise. Yeah. Especially after coming off what seemed like a a simpler movie which in the is, first which one. Which is funny to me that anything in Mission Impossible can be too much. Yeah. Well, yeah I mean, exactly. now, though. Yeah, considering <laughs> right. they were pulling faces off. Yeah, right. exactly. Right, yeah. But considering what they go through now, you know, Tom Cruise gets in a helicopter and then falls down 20,000 feet and he's yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> in you know. slow motion. Yeah. But yeah. that's, I guess, the thing, I guess, uh, what I'm wondering is, you know, now we're watching this movie. It's 30 years on. It's like, is the style... You know, obviously he didn't, I don't think he stuck with some of these techniques that he pioneered, right, Mm. in the Hong Kong cinema. Um, But they almost, like, are they like a self-parody now? It's like you're saying that they go around, you know, so much, the slow motion, uh, extreme uh, emotions, right? These zoom in to, like, every character, like, I mean, like, it is clear on their face that they are feeling some kind of peak emotion yeah. at ever to yeah. the reaction to every line in the movie mm-hmm. um yeah so much emotion <laughs> from these characters <laughs> like, in these shots it's Too very over dramatic yeah, yeah it his, is his movies from start to finish dramatic very dramatic yeah, yeah which i think that kind of i mean it, it becomes laughable it, it, but it fits yeah. the tone of this movie but it maybe does. when you start applying that to you know wind talkers it might not be the way to go. Yeah. Uh, and I don't remember movie. that style like being really uh, the thing why you went to see Wind Talkers either. You know, like Bar- Broken Arrow and Face Off were still like John Woo, you know. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he's still working the doves in everything that he does. I hope so. Yeah. What's I the hope. doves? Uh, what do the doves mean? Why, why are the doves in every John Woo thing? Purity. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. It's some kind of. I mean, they. I don't think they I gotta be know. right. Some I just kind like of spiritual that thing, or it's a soul flying around, or you know, something. I don't know. I think. Yeah. It, well, I think it d- depends on the movie. Like in this, it's like an omen. It's like direction. 
Yeah, right. the, 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 it's the dove literal. actually. It's, literal. Yeah. it's literally direction. Yeah. Check over right. here. Yeah. This is the evidence you're looking for. Yeah. It becomes more artistic in things like uh, Face Off when yeah. the cage is in the church. Yes. And there's just doves flying in the background. God, yeah. I fucking love that scene. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> It's a great visual uh, uh, thing. Um, I, it always happens. It's it is. It's like the purity before all the shit goes down. Do you, do you, Just like doves, and then yeah. fucking bullets. Yeah. Do you guys remember when Michael Jackson was on trial, and then he he got acquitted, and that lady threw a dove out for every acquitted charge they read outside the, <laughs> no. outside the courthouse. No, I missed that one. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Be free. Yeah. Be free. Did any big hawks come by and <laughs> swipe them up? Jeez. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to find a clip of that and send it to you guys. Did she throw one out and then nuts. it's just like dead and hits she the has, ground? She has a whole cage of them and every time someone reads out loud, this charge, not guilty. She was like, oh, God. And they like threw a dove What does a dove time. cost? Yeah, see, but that's the thing. You use dove. You're not throwing ravens, no, right? No, Whenever no, no. he's uh, yeah. acquitted. Yeah. So, like, it's there a sign is, of yeah. innocence, I guess, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Maybe, she, maybe she had a second crate of ravens if he was charged guilty. Yeah, yeah. no kidding. <laughs> She's just like, fuck. So. Fuck, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> well, he was also the guy who pioneered, I think, like, I don't remember seeing it before, and I remember it was very exciting in The Killer when you saw, you know, uh, gunman with Two uh, double fisting guns. Yes. Right? Leaping through the air, yes. firing multiple rounds, and sliding along banisters and floors and yes. all that stuff. It it's, was like this kind yeah. of, uh, I guess later, you know, um, there would be movies that it would be like gun foo. Yes. It was like mm-hmm. gun they, foo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kurt Wimmer would, would do that. Gun Kata. Or what, what was it? No. Is that the name of the one with Christian Bale? And Oh, I don't know. <laughs> remember that one? Um, oh, um, Equilibrium. It was equilibrium. equilibrium. Thank That's you been on my yeah, list yeah, yeah. for a long time. Yeah. That's all about. Yeah, yeah. That is, yeah. And then now we have John Wick and all that. That kind of does all yeah. this stuff. Yeah. Um, so never forget where you came from, John Wick. Right. Mm-hmm. Started with John Woo, mm-hmm. and now see he should like yeah he should be doing John Wick movies, but he should. It's yeah. probably too complicated at this point. Like, like I always forget that he doesn't do those movies. Yeah, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, I know because they feel like this they is do, yeah. the extension of where I always feel like he does those movies, and I. Yeah, it's that kinetic energy between everything and the you know the fight scenes and the contact and the cutting. It's very good. It's very it's very good in this movie. It's very good. It's very I, good. I was kind of surprised going back to it. It's, it feels like that old school. I mean, it's the old school action stuff we grew up with. Like yeah. it just felt like this movie. Like this because this feels like. I mean, there's certain things in like Lethal Weapon that feel like this as well. Yeah. Like the influences you feel it later on in other action movies. Mm-hmm. Well, I know we're going to get to the plot, but I mean, like <laughs> you know, you're, you're talking about like the old school kind of action thing. There's this kind of fetishistic uh, um, uh, camera work and like yes. appreciation of the hero, you know, yeah. of the villain. I mean, when you watch it, it's like the villain is always sneering. Yes. You know, the like, villain is the most villainous villain, and the hero is the it's most. It's a very black and white movie. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, the hero is always like these muscle shots of these guys, and they're always you know glistening like, and tan. And they, right. yeah. and they don't say much, and they they're like just decent, upstanding people. Like you could hand them a gun, and there's no problem. You know, like he's always going to use it for only the right reason and there is as sean was pointing out as we were watching it it's like how come they don't put all these clicks and you know there's sound work (laughs) that used to be like a staple of these movies back in the day that you just don't get anymore i mean and like you said because they don't want to fetishize guns and stuff like that anymore and i get it but it's kind of sad you know what i mean it works i mean that's the thing i guess that's why they would do it it's like it works you know, yeah. and, you know, being a responsible film goer that knows that this is, you know, like you know, right. a movie. I think that's it the works. Like, I know. Kind of, yeah, yeah. So it's cool to me. And I'm not like, oh, I'm going to go shoot guns now. I'm just like, no, nah, it's just cool. Only action movie. Speaking of action. So we're off to the races at the mm. beginning of this movie. There's something nefarious going on in the, mm-hmm. the city of New Orleans. Start People are being hunted down. There is a, a gang hunting this man down. He gets shot and killed and i like during the scene this is the credit scene mm. that we've got this like chase happening and like right in the middle like it pops up hard target and yeah and there's explosions yeah yep. it's such and a there's great shots scene. with the the metal arrows we mentioned yeah. where, it show, where it's them flying through the air like it tells you exactly what type of movie you're about to get into and just whoosh, 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 the sound in this is so good the mix just the 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 
uh, the effects sounds that they put into different things for explosions and whatnot. That arrow flying through the air sounds like the most dangerous yeah. arrow that has ever been launched ever. <laughs> but they did it on like on the tra- scene transitions had like this yes. whoosh, you know, and you're yeah. like, what the? You know, as the wipe comes across yeah. the screen, they were doing stuff with the vocals. You know, like Lance Hendrickson, <laughs> you know, it was like this echoey, crazy, you know, phantom thing in the sound mix it was like. Wow, this is like just it's super excessive, but like mm. <laughs> it works. I like it. But it works. <laughs> um okay, so there's so, yeah. people being hunted in, in New Orleans by this uh, syndicate for sport. Right. Which is led by Lance Henriksen. Lance Henriksen. Thank God. <laughs> My God, this man. <laughs> With a uh, uh, Arnold Vosloo as his right hand man and henchman. And Arnold Vosloo, of course, everybody would remember from The Mummy. The mummy. Yeah, he mm-hmm. is he is the, the mummy. mummy. He's the mummy. <laughs> a lot of appreciation coming around for that movie. I see, like right now, those uh, two are great. Those like, first yeah. two are yeah. great. <laughs> um, There's been appreciation for the mummy since the mummy came out. Yes. I think so. Yeah, we've always loved the mummy. We will oh, always yeah. love the mummy. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I'm seeing it like now on my feed for yeah. some reason. I mean, I don't go it around saying the word yeah, mummy stands, all the yeah. time. And but or there's somehow. that like bumper sticker. I'd rather be watching the cinematic masterpiece. The mummy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Just skip the third one. Yeah. Um. So we're introduced to an, an old West style, uh, yes. you know, like this is a Western. This is a Western. Yeah. With starts Western music in a saloon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's Chance like, Boudreaux. Yeah, it's like a New Orleans diner, but it's a saloon. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So who's, how does, how does Chance get involved in the action? Um, so he's sitting at the counter in this diner, minding his own business. And a uh, beautiful woman comes wandering in. And is as flashing her money. Like, do you have any change? I need to make a phone call. But she's flashing like all this cash. And clearly there's some, you know, ruffians in the diner. Who that take are, notice. That are take notice and are watching. I love this and kind of stuff. And he gun. notices the people watching. <laughs> yeah. I like the way that like, you know, because he's he's all of a sudden he's on at that moment. Mm-hmm. Right. He's like, oh, like, you know, she's showing His the money. I know that activated. there's guys here going to go after her. He goes out the door in slow motion, right? And he, he, he kicks it with his foot a little bit just so he can yep. see the reflection of the dudes who are up to something. But I liked when, <sighs> when they came out to chase her, right? They're following her. Like, there's two random dudes sitting on the, the bench outside. Yeah, they're the place casing the place. That they they're, get up. They're and- <laughs> looking for a victim. There's some inside. There's some outside. They're casing the place. Yeah. 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 And so she's accosted by these ruffians who, you know, uh, show up outside of her Camaro, sweet Camaro Z28. Uh, Chance shows up. And what, what does he say to them? Because it's like uh, he got a, he has he has so many lines in this movie that I, I didn't know if they were great one liners or if it was just his delivery. They were easy one liners. They were easy yeah. ones with the low hanging fruit. Yeah. yeah they're yeah. not trying too hard there, I don't think, in his there was dialogue. A language barrier in the making of this movie. Well, I bet, right? Because yeah. this is John Wu's first yeah. English language. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, we haven't talked about that yet. This is his first like English language, and that so both of them, neither one of them could communicate with each other very well. Oh yeah. no, that's gotta be the worst thing. <laughs> yeah, that's and said. they actually oh. um Sam Raimi was on the set of this movie as like the backup director in case the communication got too bad. Mm. He was just like there waiting to take makes, over if he needed I mean, it to. makes sense that they would have yeah. another director. How Sam Raimi got into it, I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah, Sam Raimi was like the backup director in this movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, probably there. So that's why I'm guessing Which there's some kind yes. of linkage <laughs> to Dark Man, both in like Vosloo's and probably producers. Farrar wrote it. Mm-hmm. Universal's uh, producing it. Mm-hmm. So um, the uh, original version of this movie, actually, I forget to the, we didn't actually look to see how long this one was. But oh yeah, director Scott. Yeah, apparently. Um, he ran into some, Wu ran into some problems when they mm-hmm. submitted this movie to the ratings board. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, this movie was resubmitted like 20 times. 20 times it was yeah. recut. I bet. And he couldn't get an R, and he was contractually obligated to deliver an R rating, and so Universal took the movie away from him and oh. recut it, and so the version that we saw is the Universal recut of mm-hmm. Hard Target. Interesting. What? Mm-hmm. I, where where does this rating come from? Because there's not a ton of blood in this they movie. They cut it all out. They cut it out. <laughs> but like, was, I don't know. I guess like, it's always crazy to me when it's like, it's okay if you shoot people hundreds of times as long as you don't show blood. It's like, they're still getting shot and you're still yeah. watching that happen. It was a like, lot bloodier. It had an NC-17 over times. and over and over again. Yeah, because I imagine there's yeah, a shotgun blast to the face that probably played too. different. 
Yeah, right. Well, tell us about There's that. There's a Jean Claude Van Damme version. Oh, he, hell yeah! He and his editor re-edited on their own. Yeah, because he said this is a Lance Henriksen movie, and people want a Jean Claude Van Damme. Oh, movie. Damn. oh shit! Yeah, so he yeah. that version. Wow. So there were more shots of him in the in the movie. Yeah. Probably more slow mo mullet twirls. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and so I think that there is. Like surviving it because I think that's only like the, a bootleg. I was like, it's a black, it's a black market copy. Yeah, yeah it's very Damn. rare. To find the director's cut available? No, because it's like a hundred and sixteen minutes or something like wow. that. It's fairly long. And then there's there is like uh, an extended version I think that showed up in Europe or something, and that one mm -hmm. might be available. Mm -hmm. And then there's the theatrical cut, and I'm yeah. not sure which one we watched. Next time it. I go to a convention, I'm gonna have to ask that bootleg guy if he's got yeah the, the JCVD. Of, uh, he's got everything, man. Like that's how I got the. <laughs> Got any of that hard yeah. target? Dude, it's, it's so funny. Because it. it looks like you're wasting your money because you get like a homemade DVD jewel <laughs> right, case yeah. with like a printout on like a home printer. But it's that's how I have the Star Wars holiday special with the commercials. And that's how I have the Poughkeepsie tapes before that got a real It's amazing. So yeah, I'm not above it. If I can't get it anywhere else, yeah. you know. Well, that amazing. used to be yeah. the reason I went to conventions yeah, was the for the bootleg mm -hmm. section. Yeah. But now you can get all that. You can just download it. Yeah. So. Um, you can probably download the uh, the the, the extended I would cut. love I if a little research. Like, I would love if that convention guy just like opens his trench coat. He's got like all the Dude, hard they, targets. It's, <laughs> I hope so, man. They, you'd, be, they'd be you'd be surprised what they end up with. So he's like, which hard yeah. target you want? I got hard well, target. I got Legend of the Overfeed. <laughs> Watching it. Ask if he has all the blood rage cuts too. The three yeah. cuts yeah. That are on that. Yeah. I got the fourth blood rage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is a fourth one? I didn't even know there was a fourth one. It's like something yeah. he put together. Yeah, it's like, exactly. oh no. He's like, well, you never saw me. It did feel there was like watching it. I was like, and knowing this, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like obviously the violence all feels toned down. They cut a guy's ear off. You don't really see it. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, the R-rated yeah. R one, that thing yeah. came off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but there were scenes that felt choppy. Mm -hmm. um, there were scenes that seemed like they were made in ADR because there's a scene where Yancey Butler, who plays uh, the daughter of the uh, the original, yeah. um, the victim, right, yeah. who's been hunted. Uh, she has a scene with Casey Lemons, who's also mm -hmm. this candy mm -hmm. man, the director of Eve's Bayou. Yeah. Who, mm -hmm. She's a police inspector that mm -hmm. you know she goes to. Like, my, my dad's missing. But that whole scene... Like happens on like all the dialogue happens when you're looking at the other person, right? And I'm like, yeah, this yeah the is back of their head, yeah, made up. Mm -hmm. Like yep. they had to put a scene together here. And yeah. like, mm -hmm. they're just using ADR dialogue. Yeah, it like, doesn't really make sense. Yeah, and there were other scenes where like people were uh, in an emotional state that you're like, yeah. why yeah. are they? Casey Lemons gets very up? angry at a doctor. Uh, a medical examiner at one point and starts oh, yeah. throwing shit around just like why, why so angry she yeah. started out at a we 10 like, we, yeah we like just learned that she wanted to reintroduce this autopsy to like have him redo it but she's like violently angry at him for not doing it right away yeah <laughs> like, it makes there's no probably sense. a history between <laughs> yeah. those two characters and scenes we didn't see and you know when you see some of those things in, in movies you go like Oh man, that's a terribly directed movie, or like you know, there's something was off. But it's usually, I think, because there's a scene that you're not seeing that was cut out that yeah. somebody somebody removed. Yeah. Um. So. Right. So. <laughs> so she. So she's like the. So the guy who was hunted, it turns out, was a homeless veteran. Yeah, veteran. Right. It's her dad, Bender. And, and she's come here looking for him. Mm -hmm. She's saved from these ruffians yeah. by Jean Claude Van Damme, mm -hmm. and then teams up with him. Yeah, who yeah, kicks she's... people through the diner windows? <laughs> it's, such, it's so good. It's so great. I know. I was sitting there going like, the, the window. Oh my god! Or the hood of the car. Oh Jesus! <laughs> and then he breaks a guy's arm like Steven yeah. Seagal style. Oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and so they <laughs> like yeah, they she, did in Halloween Ends, right? So she, <laughs> <laughs> this movie has multiple connections to Halloween Ends. Yeah, I, I don't want to talk about that trash. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we gotta because this movie was in Halloween Ends. Yeah, I know. And the best scene of the movie probably when when Corey <laughs> stepdad fair. is watching. Yeah. No, I agree. Hard with Target that. with his cat and the headphones on. In I his agree office. with that. It was the best part of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I I relate to that guy. That man know? did not deserve to die. No, he didn't. no he didn't. No. He did not fucking deserve. He loved his hard Target and his cat. He was the kid. only likable character in that movie. Yep. But I love the dedication of I'm going to put on my big.
big headphones because I need to hear all the sound yeah. in Hard Target. The I love that. The rest of the world has to disappear. Right. Yeah, but, I, well, no, I, yes. I also think that like he's got to put it on so he doesn't wake his fucking wife up. But, and he, she no, comes but he was at the junkyard. He's at the, he's at the junkyard. Oh, he? Yeah. yeah. Uh. He went to his work <laughs> to made, watch Hard Target. He really got yeah. away. Yeah. 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 He, he needed to be in the world of Hard Target. With his cat. God, that was a great character. Yeah. Okay, so... So they team up to go track yeah, so the she, down. She, um, she's been estranged from her father, but he has always written her letters. And the letters stopped after a few weeks. So she went to put in a missing persons report. And the detective says, well, here's the thing. He's homeless. There's not a lot we can do. You should go check the shelters. But you shouldn't go alone. You should take someone that knows the city. She's like, well, I just met someone that seems to know the city. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go can find it him. At least protect me. <laughs> so go down right. to the docks and find, yeah. just look for him. I was told that you'd be by the docks. <laughs> yeah. And, and John Claude Van Damme is a better police detective than the police because yep. his first instinct, well, they find out that. Uh, that uh, the, her father is dead. Mm-hmm. Eventually, yeah, the police do find. Well, the police are like, on strike. Yeah, yeah. Is that for, that never it played shows, into it. it. No, it did. For, it did because I was sitting there through the whole movie. Actually, I forgot about that. Yeah, so you said it right now. I'm like the whole movie. There's like no opposition to this army of fucking right. bad yeah. guys running yeah. through it, and I'm like. How in the fuck? And then now that you're saying it, yeah, I'm like, police are on strike. Oh, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Are on Which strike. is why there's that scene when Lance Hendrickson's like, there's always a corner of the world that's like in peril or something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So I guess that's the question then. Yeah. Who is Lance Hendrickson and what has he got going on in New Orleans? Lance Hendrickson is the um, creator of the most dangerous game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which this movie is loosely based on. Yeah. Yeah. I would have liked to see more of that Me in too. this movie. You yeah. know, it just barely scratches the surface with this idea, I think. But yeah, so he's the he's the thug that's um, finding these yeah. these homeless veterans to sell to. Wasn't that the plot of uh, what was that? I remember there was an Ice T movie. With Rutger, it was oh, surviving wow. the game. Oh my god! Survi- wasn't that the most dangerous yes, game? It was. I it's mean, like yeah. man is about? the yeah, yeah. They're hunting. It's always like hunting down vagrants or something. Yeah. Except the one that turns the tables on you. And, I mean, that's basically what they got going. Well, in this on one, here. they say they only hunt military people because they need someone with some skill, so that it's not just like a firing right. squad. Yeah. Some yeah. skill, and they want. They're looking uh, for homeless people so that. They can yeah. go missing without so, yeah, like anybody we, coming to so look like for we them. We need someone that will be a challenge, but also that we can get away with killing. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. they pick homeless veterans. Mm-hmm. And so we're introduced to Lance Henriksen as this. Uh, he he plays the piano aggressively Aggress- while, while staring, staring at himself, at himself <laughs> in, the mirror. in the mirror. That's a, that's in a, a beautiful, villain. like rich villain mansion. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like a yeah. plantation yeah. house because yeah. this yeah. is a plantation. Yeah. yeah. And he Gorgeous. arranges to have these rich guys come in, uh, pay a fortune to hunt down other people. So this is before mm-hmm. Hostel, right? <laughs> Which yeah. probably, uh, but um, and so and then Arnold Vosloo is like his uh, second in command or whatever. They're like mercenaries that have mm-hmm. e- existed in the world. They've gone to like sure. he says they the, probably came mm-hmm. out of some war together and and you know had no place. And we're like, let's get into business doing yeah. this. Yeah, I feel like they met in like some crazy like South African drug ring or something. Yeah, something. And yeah. then apparently became lovers according yeah. to yeah. Oh, these they two do. are hands yeah. down lovers. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> this is the vibe. They bicker oh, about everything. Yeah, and there's that scene where he's like, are you mad at me? Like, yeah. we are absolutely <laughs> in love with each other. I don't get mad. I'm yeah. a professional. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're yeah. absolutely We'll talk lovers. about it. That's We'll talk about it later. <laughs> yeah. That's what that is. Because <laughs> you don't want to make me look bad in front of my dog. Yeah, it's yeah. very much like we will talk about this at home. Yes. Yeah. Like, Lance Henderson's giving off some vibes in this movie like he's the baddest motherfucker. He well, is. He does, though. He, he is. is a scary fighter. I mean, when you meet him in yeah. person, he's, he's very yeah, cool. Yeah, I met him a few times. Yeah, he's a, he's a he nice, terrifying? sweet old man now. Oh, okay. You know? I was he's like, a I, nice guy now. It's like I, I mean, he nice. just looks, he just always got that look, though. He feels like he'd be more Bishop. Like, yeah. As yeah, a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the name but, of his autobiography, right? Is uh, It's a line from Aliens about uh, being, being human. human. Yeah. I think so. 
Not more human than human. Not bad for a human. Not bad for a human. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. a good. Isn't that's it crazy good. how many different ways he can play a bad guy though? Because we watched Stone oh Cold God. not that long ago. I know he's and fucking he's terrifying. Terrifying in, there, in that, but in a completely different way than this. <laughs> yeah. You know, why is this world uh, not recognizing he, how he, great Lance Pumpkinhead? He's a morning dad that you feel yeah. horrible for. Yeah. Like well, he's a versatile I see, guy. I truly want to see the Terminator movie where he is the Terminator. Hell yeah! That I want to see that. I know, yeah. and that's that's why I want to see it. Because mm-hmm. I know we got the big Arnold one. I want to see the one who's like who could, you know, uh, uh, blend in. With, yeah. well, no, blend in with a crowd. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, even, I don't think he'd need to emote because he'd be scary as fuck when yeah. he doesn't. And even like I know you guys didn't like Near Dark, but even that is a different performance from all this. Oh, like yeah, yes. he's played a yes. villain a million different ways at this point in his life. Yeah, even in a movie yeah. I don't like, he's still a national yeah. treasure. Yeah. But does he play like? I mean, uh, you know, I, su- I suppose Bishop is like his most <laughs> like he innocent or human role, right? Mm-hmm. I mean. And even moments in that, he just stares at you, and you're just like, Ugh. yeah. I mean, he was been in stuff. He's in the original Terminator. He's yeah, in he's the uh, cop. Piranha Two: The Spawning. Mm-hmm. I remember as a uh, you know like a cop, you know, and fighting off a flying piranha. Hey, come on, you want to see this movie, don't you? I mean, yeah. Piranha Two? Oh, I don't know if I have one sequel. I they fly on my list. They, yeah, they're they, flying. Oh. Piranhas. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot wow. he was in the Quick and the Dead. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's I forgot in the Quick about and the Dead. That was yeah. the other one yeah. I was going to mention. Yeah, but he's a bad guy in that. But it's more of like with a comedic you know uh edge to it he yeah. doesn't feel as like jesus christ like this guy is a but i respect yeah, that because he could so easily just coast on the way he looks and not try at all and and still make a killing yeah. playing the same type of villain so i respect that he makes he it makes up a it little different bit. yeah time. exactly he's so great especially in that hellraiser movie we watched man <laughs> 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 oh boy um and and talk about commitment to your craft. This is the movie that set Lance Henriksen on fire. Oh my yes. god! Like we want you to walk around on fire for like five minutes, Lance. You good with I that? Actually, yeah, I actually forgot about that. I've yeah, seen that this, but nuts. I forgot. About and yeah, that. it is fucking impressive. He is fucking on fire. Yeah, like it's not a stunt double. It's, no, it's Lance him. Henriksen, and the entire back of his coat is like on fire. And like you can tell afterwards. I think they're trying to do you know pass it off as like well he's really hot. But he's oh, got sure. all he's the, got the flame oil, retardant like the, stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. spread all like, over his yeah. the back of his head. And he did, he pulled that's off a, so well. That's a, we should that's ask him commitment. that next yeah. time. You see, oh, like, yeah. that, so did right. you get like burned off of this? Right. I mean, that was like on him. He's trying to struggle to take this flaming right. That he's and it's in his face it and everything. <laughs> Jesus. He's just like, Rah! you know. A dedicated great. Yeah, I know. Treasure. I feel like at horror conventions, he's always doing like an aliens panel or something. Like, no, do like, give me the stone cold, give me the hard target, give me those right. panels. You know. Um. So I guess yeah. So he's the bad guy, and he's recruiting people, and he makes the mistake of recruiting uh, Jean Claude Van Damme's uh, homeless buddy, mm. uh, another veteran who will be hunted down mm-hmm. and senselessly murdered mm-hmm. on the streets of New Orleans. And he does that's, put up a good fight, though. Yeah. He does. That's basically the most dangerous game segment of mm-hmm. the movie. Yeah. That's yeah. it right there. Um, they're being recruited through a crooked advertising dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's yeah. like uh, casting direct, couch Direct guy. advertising, right. It's, it's basically yeah. passing out flyers for sex shows. Yeah. And so they track, uh, everybody ends up, you know, coming out of this guy's office and then disappears. So that's, you know, our Mm -hmm. lead. And so they rough him up like three times, I think. There's like, (laughs) we're going to rough you up and then we didn't get anything from you. We're coming back and we're roughing you up again after the bad guys have already roughed you up. (laughs) And then it's like, it it came from Poke. We have to go and uh, and talk to him again. But they never get a chance because the poor guy gets his head blown off in the streets of New Orleans. Yeah. By a sneering Arnold Vosloo. By the mummy, yeah. Yep. <laughs> but I want to say that that moment actually began the big, like, we're going it's into It's like the action. race started there. And yeah. It's like action, yeah. action, action. Yeah. I don't even know if I can describe this sequence because it is so complicated. And that's, I guess, the it's, thing that you love John Woo for. It's for beautiful. It. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, intricate. Intricate action sequences, but that make they make sense. Like, you did you guys... 
the geography of it and everything. Did it all make sense yeah. to you guys? Yes. I yes. never I never got lost in it, which it is, makes total sense. Which can be a problem with action movies. Yeah, you get lost in where you are. And especially movies nowadays, they try to do so much so quickly. It's like what just happened? Like, yes. what did, and like they do things that you don't even catch because it's done so quickly. Those Transformers movies are the worst offenders yeah. of that. I couldn't t- like I can't see anything that's happening. It's just like metal swirling around dirt yeah. and like Transformers. Well, did I movies? tell you at one point because I was trying to figure out the Michael Bay style yeah. and I was actually yeah. analyzing like a couple scenes from transformers and i'm like there is no geography no it's just a car goes you know through a wall here and then it's in a space that you're like how did yeah. we get here mm-hmm. and then it crashes yep. through a bunch of shit and there's like three different cameras and <laughs> quick cutting uh <laughs> this they're in the in the show um tv show psych there's a moment when someone's like I don't know what's with movies these days. I'm not going to say it's Michael Bay's fault, but he needs to be stopped. <laughs> <laughs> well, he made these kinetic movies with shots that are only four seconds long. And I mean, kind of redefined, I think, like an appetite for uh, action movies yeah. where John Woo's going the opposite way. Right. We're going to slow everything down. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a spin. He's like, kick. hey, we're going to set up this really great scene where he stands on a motorcycle <laughs> And goes straight and so, at a truck. He, he yep. surfs a motorcycle. He surfs a motorcycle. He's like, I want you to see this shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. And I do want to see it. Yeah. yeah. I want to see it. Don't speed it up. It was amazing. <laughs> no, amazing. <laughs> amazing. His, uh, that's the climax of this big, long action scene that we're talking about. But yeah, he ends up like... Because as I was watching, I'm like, he's going at this truck. Like, yeah. what's going to happen? The, the motorcycle well, engine even, is even, leaking. Yeah. And you're like, that means it's going to blow up at some point. Mm-hmm. But the stunt guy hits the front of the truck and goes flying over it and lands on his ankles. Yeah. yeah. Which I'm like, that guy's going to have some That's, pain tomorrow yes. morning. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, where's the padding at the bottom right. of the shoe? I don't <laughs> no, that, no, because that guy no. was like, I'll land on my feet. So yeah. Car in my wreck. cowboy he boots. flips over it. And then he shoots the motorcycle and blows it all up. This mm-hmm. is after he's already killed everyone. Yeah, because then, that's then the he blows him up. That's the thing about this movie is like everything that you want to happen, John Woo gives you. Yeah, yeah. even exactly. yeah, like, right. Even a dove shitting yeah. on a dude's head. Yeah, <laughs> he, he gives it to you. He just yeah. serves it to you. It's beautiful. Like we keep seeing these motorcycle, these like thugs on motorcycles, and I'm like, when is he going to take one of them? And he does. He and kicks it's the guy beautiful. in the face he as he's driving by. He kicks him in the face and takes his motorcycle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's everything I want. Mm-hmm. The geography question, or I guess this, you know, slow motion and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. He does often cut between um, like a, a slow motion of the actual physical action, right? So Jean-Claude Van Damme mm-hmm. spin kicking his slow motion. With maybe that mullet twirling and glistening in mm-hmm. the wind. Yep, yeah, because we maybe there might be two two sh- slow motion cameras, the close up and the wider one, right? right? As the contact is made with the, the yeah. motorcyclist Cause, helmet. Because it's John Woo, it's never one angle. But then Multiple. it cuts to like a third I view camera, which is at real speed. And that's, I think how he keeps on giving us the geography. Cause he'll do like these slow motion kind of like, okay, we're seeing some guy, you know, get fucked up or grabbing this gun and going slow motion here. But then he cuts to the real time one. Yeah. So you see the tail end of the action and you're like, Oh, he's running that way. Yeah. <laughs> or, oh, he's right. going down here. And when you see that he would cut in like, at the end of uh, Van Damme's movement, so you actually see how fast Van Damme was moving. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, fuck, that guy was, you know, this mm-hmm. isn't like, okay, I'm going to go half speed or whatever. It's like, right. he's actually doing these pretty sensational, mm-hmm. uh, you know, martial arts moves. Indeed. And it helps with, like, that's what makes the action, uh, the impact of all the action comes off of this as well. Because when you're doing the slowdown and then you go back to the regular speed, right, like right when impact happens, like it helps you feel the action off of that. It's some impressive work. Yeah. Very. Uh, there's at least, you know, and, and that's the thing. I guess the action, you know, uh, keeps topping itself as the movie goes mm-hmm. on because there is a circus scene later on. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a, that's one thing I love about this movie is that one of the characters is New Orleans. Like they fil- they fil- really they filmed the whole thing in New Orleans and you see all these different pieces and it's like the city is part of this movie. I feel like you Indeed. don't see that in movies anymore. They're yeah. all take place in like kind of a nameless. Yeah. Like, Cuz it's all green screens in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why, you know. Yeah. Well, no, this had New Orleans proper and mm-hmm. then the swamps. And the the shootout in the cemetery. I was like, yeah, this is exactly what I oh, think yeah. of when I think yes. of New Orleans is yeah. this yeah. cemetery. They yeah. really do capture the city. I think it's great. No gators in this movie though. No yeah. gators. That's surprisingly. A 
It is a bummer, but I feel like there's a part that kind of makes up for yep. it. <laughs> yeah. Unless, is there a scene that got cut, maybe? I'm <laughs> wondering. Where he punched I'm, an alligator? Yeah, I'm wondering. Yeah. They, they, no, he would have grabbed it by the their... tail and whipped it around. Yeah. Yeah. They talk about someone? gators, and I was like, you can't yeah. mention it and not pay it off. I know. You know? Yeah. It's, it's like the one thing that I, I wanted from this. Right. But... Well, I often wonder if, like, and I think we talk about this. I had this feeling on another movie that we watched. I don't remember what it was, but I often when it's like a foreign director comes to America and then they're like, Hey, you can make a movie and whatever. Like they see the city and they're like, well, I'm going to show, I'm going to set up this scene where the, the, the trolley car is going by mm. because that's new Orleans or yeah. we're going by these landmarks that like, like we're absolutely going to the French quarter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, I'm going to show it off in a way that maybe an American filmmaker like, eh, we've shot new Orleans a hundred times, mm. you know? And so it feels kind of, it gives you that new perspective on it mm-hmm. when you, when you see these movies. Um, the, the so there's no alligators but <laughs> so eventually of yeah. course Yancey Butler who do we know Yancey Butler from anything else I mean I know her from one other thing really what's the one other thing Witchblade uh-huh. <laughs> this is a TV show where she got the gauntlet that's it that's it you're right she's got the fucking gauntlet yeah, yeah Witchblade yeah. I'm, I'm watching this whole thing going where the fuck do I know her from I she's, forgot about Witchblade she's not great she's Holy she's uh, she's, she's all right. very she's, attractive I think that is like she, her eyes look like they're popping out of her head this yeah, whole movie yeah, she looks like a lot of people I see wearing contacts to try and yeah. get that look but yeah. you know mm-hmm. she actually has it um, fucking Witchblade yeah. Witchblade a TNT staple yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, uh, she. Yeah, she's not. Yeah, she's not great, but she also doesn't have to do much. Right. She's not giving a lot. No, so it's not. It's, a, it's, it's not okay. a very well written. This is not. Part. Her, this is not her movie. No. Because yeah. <laughs> at some point there was a a moment where it was like, okay, you can safely exit the movie now. And then somehow she found a way to come <laughs> and back. That's into it. You're it. Like, she could have been gone, and then <laughs> yeah. she just turns her horse around and comes back. <laughs> There's horses. Okay, so it's yeah. a western. This but, scene though, because yeah, they cause have to flee the. Yeah. Because yeah. now Sean's is he's the he's the target now. Yep, they have to because he's the hard target. Well, but he does say like if you're not with me, I'm hunting them. So Right, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. So at this point he realizes like okay, I got to get her to safety so that I can do my thing and start hunting them instead of being the hunted. Right, so but, this, but he says that after uh he, they go and visit his uncle. No, no but, but on, on the, the way. On the oh, okay, way, on the way. On the way, they're going through the jungle and this is where I, we all assume that there's going to be a gator at some point and there's not. But they're standing by a tree, and he tells her to close her eyes. <laughs> and you think, oh, God, here we she go. She puckers up. Oh, Here's yeah. the kiss scene. Like, uh, We're making it a romance. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> there comes slithering down from the tree a big, fat snake that's about like, over like, her shoulder. Op- over her shoulder, like white open mouth about yeah. to like with the biggest clamp open down. mouth yeah, the ever. biggest <laughs> jaw is unhinged, and it's about to clamp down. Right, it's going to take her head. <laughs> yeah. And he grabs that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Pulls what does he do to tree. it? What does he do, Sean? He well, slaps it. Slaps the top of his head. Yeah, he does. The just like how you'd slap a snake. Yeah. Just slaps the top of his head. And then. And then punches it in the face. Punches it in the face. <laughs> Is it dead? No. 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 Not dead. And then he bites the, the rattle off. It, now, does he do this so that he can set up the trap yeah, and so, so it doesn't won't alert? It. Okay. Yes. 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 It won't yeah. rattle. They yeah. won't hear it. Like. Yep. Could, it <laughs> Do you have to bite it off? Yeah, that's that, that that I mean, I agree with the decision. Rip it off, I'm sure. That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> but I agree with the teeth. It was a choice and a choice that I agree with. <laughs> it's great. It comes out of nowhere. It's, it's, I mean, I guess it is in keeping with the tone of this movie. It's where it's just going over the top. So it's, it is. It, this is the part that's most outside the tone of this movie. But I it's, accept it it's wholeheartedly. So great, though, because you're like, really? Are we about to do a romance? Like, don't put this yeah. shit in my movie. Mm. And, and then, then he sets it up. Uh, and then it's a snake that he punches in the face. Yeah. And it's wonderful. I just, I love that slap. And it's, I and I truly love that this snake is seriously like completely like jaw unhinged. It's like about it's to like defile. a rubber cartoon. Yeah, yeah think of like oh, when the wonderful. alien opens his mouth to like yeah. 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 yeah yeah. And this I had never seen this movie before, but this is the clip I had seen a yeah. bunch on the like, internet. Most yeah. people they see this and they see him like running with the fire behind. Yeah, him. like yeah. that's yeah. the yeah. two yeah. things that they yeah. see a lot. He's running with the fire behind him a lot in this movie because yep. there's always yes. explosions <laughs> going on. Always but they seek shelter. At uh, at Chance's uh, chance Chance's <laughs> no, Chance, yeah. Chance, right. Chance's uh, uncle's house, yeah. Uncle Duvet, Duvet mm-hmm. played by the great Wilfred Brimley, the one and only in his greatest movie role, in his greatest, like, <laughs> with his he, greatest accent as a deep South 
or deep uh, Louisiana yeah. uh, uh, Creole. moonshiner. Mm-hmm. Cre- Cajun, Creole. Cajun moon. Sorry, Cajun Creole, yeah. Creole moonshiner. <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh. Wilfred Brimley is living his best life in this movie. He, is. He, even, he even gets like hero, like hero pose moments. Yeah. Like, right? Great. The shot of so yes. Wilfred Brimley gets in the fight right because he's oh, like yeah. you know, he gets a fire moment. Yeah, he's riding on horseback with a bow and arrow after just setting yes. off a massive chain of explosions in the still, and the house blows up, and he's riding away he's from riding it away so much. It. He's like, Viva la France! Yeah. <laughs> I, and he's gone. I love that his weapon of choice is a bow and arrow, too, because like, you can be really confident in your ability yeah. to use a bow and arrow. Right? Has, That's how badass yeah. he is. He has a shotgun, too, yeah. but he chooses, he chooses a bow and arrow. arrow. Uh, yeah, it's, brilliant. it's fantastic. He doesn't have the old 38 because Gator took it, but he's still got <laughs> chances. Old shotgun. See, did, was that scene also in the cut? Because I need to see that, too. The scene where he lost his yeah, gun. Yeah, I know, yeah. right? That would, that would have yeah. been a great cut to a flashback real quick yeah. and then cut back. Well, I thought he was going to, like, I lost it to the alligator. But then I wrestled the alligator to death, yeah. and here right, it is. Right. Yeah. Point, he, like, points at the wall. Yeah, and it's the on the wall. Yeah. I was thinking the same. Yeah. Got it back, though, but yeah. the gun was total. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and so this uh, uh, chance, of course, this is where he's like, uh, he can eject Yancey Butler from the movie right. in order to save her life. Yes. Like, I'm going to leave her with Uncle. He'll take care of her. That's right, because yeah. uh, Casey Lemons has died in the line oh, of duty. Yeah. She was killed in this massive uh, uh, French Quarter mm-hmm. uh, action scene, mm-hmm. which I think that one, which climaxed on the bridge. Yes. Or no, that ended with them jumping off onto the train and getting lost in the woods. Yeah, and, and then, then that's uh, when they end up in the jungle. Calling yep. in all the reinforcements, including helicopters. and I mean, it's like a massive crew hunting, and the old hunters yeah. who have participated in past uh, events like, are called you, in. How do you... I, like, is there also like a doc union where these like mercenaries show up and get their name called? Like, how do you find these people? <laughs> I'd like to think so. Yeah, right? just, same way. Yeah, same right? way. I want that movie. They're recruiting from the because I mean they came. They were they were soldiers of fortune. They yeah. probably it's Soldier of Fortune magazine. It's the classified ads. Soldier of Fortune magazine. Okay. That's how they're meeting everybody. Is there a soldier okay. or was there a soldier? Hirehitman dot com. Is there a, hire a union forum? Dot com. Uh, you didn't hear that news story? They caught this guy who like thought that was a real oh, thing. Oh no, I signed believe up it. To be a hitman, and they were oh, like, no. "You're going to jail." Oh wow, <laughs> yeah. that's it was like amazing. An ex- I, I think ex- I remember uh, that soldier. story. Oh, geez, um, people are dumb. <laughs> so anyway, Chance Le- on horseback leads mm-hmm. the villains to mm-hmm. the Mardi Gras graveyard. Right, that's great. That's great. <laughs> well, th- I mean, it's that was like- after like. Uh, um, and we talked about uh, Wolford Brimley riding away after he explodes it, but he did blow up his entire thing. And Lance yeah. Hendrickson's reaction to the whole thing. He's getting very frustrated at this point. Lance Hendrickson is also very funny in this yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah. And his outburst is like, move! Yeah. Just, Just fucking move! move. Yeah. God, you're all brain I, dead. <laughs> I do appreciate, yeah, because the, the snake trap does work. We didn't mention that. He That's sets true. up the snake trap and it it's does gr- oh, bite brutal. someone in the yeah. face. It's really mm-hmm. gross. And then later on, Wilford Brimley sets a trap as well where his entire estate like blows up in right. different yes. sections. Yeah, and yeah. and Lance Henriksen I think kills more of his own men. Like he's got he's incompetent his, so he kills him. His and, one bullet gun that explodes people. Yeah. yeah. If he'd spend <laughs> less time dying noisily <laughs> and more time hunting this guy yeah. and, there's, a, there's a there's a where he like sweeps a dude's leg and then yells at him to get in the truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just knocking dudes over. I mean, I'd be pretty grumpy if I was wearing a wool duster in the swamp. Seriously. My they gotta God. Be yeah. Hot. Yeah. Hope they shot this in the miserable. winter. Right. You know what? There was one scene when um they're at Wilford Brimley's house in um Jean Claude. It looks like it might be morning. And I swear you can see their breath. I'm huh. like, I think it might be uh, cold. Yeah. So, it's cold. Yeah, it's yeah. so fucking hot to shoot like for the rest of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not a whole lot of sweat. I did notice in the in the plantation house when he was playing the piano, his he had sweat on his sweating, back. Yeah. I'm like, it's fucking hot in there. Yeah. Bro. Um, he is playing aggressively, though. He, he is. is. He's, he's got his, he's, he's worked up. Um, so there is. Uh, it's like an old factory like abandoned factory where the Mardi Gras graveyard is. Like the float. It's yep. old yeah. Mardi the floats, Gras yeah. Yeah. floats are in there. Yeah. And this, floats and props. But they have that like old timey look that makes them even creepier. Exaggerated than normal. It's not cartoonish. like Snoopy floats like Macy's no, it's, Day. It's, it's like it's old timey. traditional timey-y. Mardi yeah. Gras stuff but like right. old Which old always looked a little stuff. sinister yeah. if yeah. you really look at it. Yeah. yeah. But this has got some of like the greatest like John Woo This is amazing. Uh, stunt work Sparks, yes. stuff like that. Flames. Because they're shooting grenades at each other or some kind of shit. There is purple it's coming out of shit. <laughs> um, it, there are truly so many explosions in this so final part. Many. Oh my god! I, I I almost forgot what to expect coming into this. I'm just like 
It's going to be an action scene. It was a fucking action scene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it topped, I think that's the important thing, right? It topped everything that had kind yes. of come before it. And before it, we were clapping. Because yeah. like, yeah. those scenes there were There were like, some good explosions. Yes. You know? <laughs> some really, what did we clap at the first one? We got, we got our first big the, explosion. We I think like, it was the, the standing the on the motorcycle. Thing. Thing. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 after that, so. the car yeah. exploded. And then he went like flipping. And they were like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, he did the he did the one handed like. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There was perfect punctuation to the. It's impossible to do. That's really hard to do. <laughs> um, so this massive shootout takes place, you know, and Wilfred Brimley and Yancey Butler end up there, uh, and they're like part of. The, I think that she kills a guy. She, she does, fucking yeah. blows a dude away. Yeah. Like yeah. this is the first time holding a gun, you get the feeling, and she shoots him like well, eight definitely times because she's pointing it down. She, she is. Blew his balls <laughs> off. Right. There's a lot of kind of we're pointing down as we shoot these people in this movie. I've noticed right. on a couple of times. I'm just like, ow! <laughs> like I know they're getting shot and everything hurts, but shot Jesus, junk. I mean, yeah. I, I have to assume it's like safety precautions for the filming of this movie. <laughs> To not aim at someone's like head. Yeah. Well, sure. Yeah. Especially yeah. Being, well, I wouldn't expect head just like just yeah. Because actually, now you, you're no, the crow hadn't been shot yet. That was the one that had a <laughs> fatal. Shot. Ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, had well, a well. fatal accident there yeah. on on set. Uh, I think that was the year after the, I think this so. year, maybe. Um, but the uh, so there's this massive shootout. All the bad guys are taken care of in. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we can't even get into it. I think it's, it's like so much shit happening. Jean Claude Van Damme's on a pelican. Yes. It's yeah. raining, it's raining rain. hellfire down on people <laughs> with one shotgun. That's all he's got. He has a shotgun and he takes out 30 dudes. Yeah, but there's a scene where I'm like, did every video game like rip this off? The yes. red, the red barrel. He the shoots barrel. the barrel. It takes yes. off and this big explosion blows up. Um, Love it. There's grenades. There's jumping he, through windows. Explosion. It's and he has everything. to eventually do a face off with. He does. Uh, they go back. Arnold to back. Vosloo. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a pretty good one. That is. That's great. <laughs> that is. It comes both, back and face off. They're, they're both reloading. Oh, it's yes. great. While their backs are lo- against the wall that. on opposite sides Two, of the back wall. Back to back, you see them both talking to each other, and yeah. it's just I love fun. It. As they're getting ready to blow each other away, and then we get the John Woo, you know, like because then uh, Jean Claude Van Damme gets the, the the both guns, yep, and they apparently like never run out because he's just <laughs> running around like blah, 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 blah. Don't you remember the rules from Last Action Hero? In the real world, you have to reload the damn gun. In the <laughs> well, movie they, world, you I don't. That they do pay service, lip service to it, because he's always like robbing the dead guys. He of is the which I don't know that I've seen in other movies where they have that many shots of like pulling a clip from a dead there guy. There are a there's, lot in there's this. There's a lot of like pull the clip and reloads in this. Yeah, it, yes. it actually adds up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even uh, though I'm sure the gun fires many more rounds than I'm sure than it does, but the fact that they throw that in, I'm like, yeah. I'm okay with it. Right, that gives a uh, uh, pass for everything. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you showed it a few times, I'm good. Dude, you tried. I'm good. Yep, <laughs> nobody else put that much effort into it. You're good. And uh, of course, then the final showdown mm-hmm. happens as he has to go up against Lance Henriksen himself. And Lance well, Henriksen, he does I mean, take Arnold Vosloo out. I was going to yeah. say, there's some good parts here. Like, first of all, when he, um, before he even kills him, he kills someone else by shooting the gun upside down. Yeah. That oh, was yeah. spectacular. That was Sven Thompson, uh, Thompson from all those Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. That was spectacular. <laughs> first of all, we can't forget about as the you know, group of Lance Henriksen's men is coming up to this abandoned factory, there's one guy who got in there on a motorcycle mm-hmm. and he gets fucking blasted through a window outside. Yeah. Oh, that was a, great. That right was fantastic. Off the yeah. Right, right, off, the right off the bat. Right. Oh, yeah, because he kicks going. a gas can into him, shoots it, and he gets blown out through the back <laughs> window. So beautiful. beautiful. That was the guy who got shit on by the Yeah, yeah. The he got pigeon. shit on by the pigeon. It's beautiful. Yeah. beautiful. It's well orchestrated. Yeah. Uh, and then I like I like the death, uh, uh, the mummy death, when he like <laughs> yeah. comes at him like from under the table. Right, uh, yeah, like, yeah. diehard style. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I've seen the slide under the table before. Yeah. I don't know if I, it comes from John. And then Moore, he starts to like fall forward, and he puts his leg up and stops him, and then yeah. takes the grenade. I was like, man, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's and that stuff. grenade's gonna come into play later. Yeah. Because Lance Hendrickson's choice of he's got this uh like fifty cal it's not a fifty cal what is that it's a large caliber single shot yes. uh, long gun that he's using and uh, he eventually takes uh, Yancey Butler hostage and uh, because I think he's got an arrow to her throat yes he's like, yeah. He, 
You know, you can't shoot me because you got a shotgun. Mm-hmm. They've, gonna, they've kill he's us both. incapacitated uh, Wilford Brimley. Not killed him, but he right. thinks he's killed him. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It turns out he only shot him with an arrow in the moonshine. Yeah. Uh, his little flask. So he's going to be alive. Thank God Wilford Brimley, Brimley will survive this movie. That's yes. all I need. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, uh, there, I mean, the music that they play, like, there's this, you know, tense, you know, high noon kind of standoff, yeah. right? Yeah. Where Yancey Butler has to reach into the ammo belt yeah. and reload because he's busy holding the, the arrow to her yeah. and pointing the gun at. Yancey, so reload me. And yeah. she looks at Van Damme and Van Damme kind of gives her the nod, like, go ahead. Yep. <laughs> and so that's the moment, right? And all of a sudden, Van Damme begins his slow motion run and the music's like, and you're like, oh, fuck. This is going to be. And he gets in there and kicks him in the face or something like that. Blazer soon goes back. And it ends up right with the 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 punching. He ends up taking that grenade, and dropping it. Well, even down be, even Lance before Henderson's that, pants. even before that, when he's got the arrow tour, he's like, he's like, I don't understand why you're doing this. Like, oh yeah, what, what do you have in this? And he's like, poor people get bored too. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> just. That was brilliant. <laughs> Not an answer, just a just a one liner. I love it. I'm, I'm, but then, yeah, he then too. he then he shoves a grenade in his pants. <laughs> yeah, and that has a great comedic bit. It that, does because then he gets kicked backwards into a yeah. pile of floats and everything, and then he's hunting rushing se- to get it out. Hunting and season's over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and instead of getting it out of his pants and throwing it away. Which, he okay. tries to defuse it. He tries to defuse it, and he pulls out sort of the detonator piece. He's like, "Ha ha!" But it's not oh. far enough, and it sparks. He basically gives an ope, <laughs> and then blows oh. up. He does do an ope. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. I remember in the theater that got a huge laugh. It should. It's and funny. It, it also seems like that was like you know maybe not planned. <laughs> like that was just something that happened, and they're like, "We're keeping that in." And it sparked <laughs> a few times. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then and he, ex- he explodes. They they <laughs> he explodes. Yeah. They pick yeah, up Wilford Brimley and start walking out. Yep, his, he's Credits. Crushed. He's, Love it. He's fine. It just hit his flask. He's alive. Yep. We don't Credits need to. See, yeah, we don't need to see anything afterwards. Like uh, two days later, nope, as they're all bandaged up. up and they're yeah. talking. No, nothing. No wrap up gone. necessary. They've survived. The movie is over. Get the fuck out. Yeah. That's all I need to know. Yeah. Yep. There's Pouring nothing more we can get you. from these people. <laughs> Some credence to kick out. But yep. there, that's yeah. the, that's the go to song. They end with a little CCR. It fits. It fits. All right. Well, um, <laughs> Michaela's been a little quiet here for a little bit, so maybe she hated the movie. You're going to find out after we read some of your mail. Oh, yeah. But to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters. Masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Igor just flew in here like an action scene with his oh mailbag. i thought you were saying like a dove no yeah, i thought he I, was like doving around in like, here brrr. yeah he Does just he... flies in. it's like where uh, why are oh, you a dove could, igor could we give him carrier pigeons to like send letters that makes <gasps> yeah. i like that yeah, yeah, yeah i like right. that but they're like little igors yeah. with wings and yeah. Shit. yeah yeah they're like Ooh. reptilian yeah yes yeah are well, we gonna add that to the how you can get a hold of us <laughs> yeah like carrier pigeons if you can pull it off Yes, yeah. please. Yeah. I'll give Honestly, you my that address. Would be awesome. <laughs> I really, really want Guys, no, I'll give you Colin's be, address. Wouldn't it be cool if you just like heard a little tap tap on your window and you looked and a bird's like sticking its foot out with a scroll for you? <laughs> wouldn't that be awesome? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It oh, would. especially if it's using the scroll to tap on the window. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would be like, I've been chosen for something. <laughs> this been, is amazing. My, my whole life is about to change. Right. Guys, something yeah. big is guys, happening. Guys, guys, I'm going on a mission. <laughs> I'm going to Kumite. I'm going to yes. Hogwarts. I'm going somewhere. somewhere. Something's happening. Yeah. This is Mortal Kombat. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Happening. I'm going to figure out how to do it. And then the pigeon yeah. self destructs as it flies away. Okay. Why is there not an online service? You know, you can, you know how you can like buy an yeah. acre on the moon? Why Isn't is there, there not one? like, There's hey, send be. a carrier right. pigeon to your friend? Copyright uh, 2023 yeah. Saturday Night Freak Show. There we go. Carrier Haven't busted pigeons. that All one. those ideas. That's yeah. our now idea. You know, I know. I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, we got to so, find this. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it somewhere. All right. Well, we should let the good folks at home who don't have carrier pigeons know how they can get a hold of us by following along on Facebook. 
Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or they can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. That's or, kind of the carrier. Yeah, 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 basically. Yeah. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. Good, Ooh. sir. Are we putting what do Brimley on there? Yeah. Guys, I found, I'm sorry, I found a website called pigeongram.com. So, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Hell yeah. and it's, and You're it all says, getting pigeon grams next week. <laughs> it says real pigeons carrying real messages. So yes. I'm getting excited. I need, yeah. I need price quotes. I, know, oh I need destinations. Damn. That means we can't oh, make Well, I mean, this website this. looks like it's from like 1998. Oh, like so GeoCities? <laughs> It's, yeah, look, it's not very. It's, oh, it's, no. it's, okay. This might steal my data. If I those are pay, some. I those are some payment. old ass pigeons. Are yeah. like, I like that they've got a YouTube channel. Though, <laughs> this so can this one that's only got one leg. I was like, those pigeons aren't in that line of work anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Right, I well, don't then, do that anymore. I mean, really, it's like, uh, I need the money. Well, then we <laughs> should tape send, it to my uh, leg. We should send ravens, but then that's also copyright twenty twenty three. Uh, anyway, Casey Lemons. Uh, is on the Saturday Night Freak Show oh, Wall of Fame yeah. because she was in Hard Target as the detective. She was in Candyman as Bernadette. She was also in Vampire's Kiss. If you remember, I think that was uh, Nicholas Cage's she? first date. Right. Oh, oh, and the yeah. one. Yeah. I like Casey Lemons. Yeah, yeah she's good. Me too. About tonight's movie, Hard Target, Pat Hatfield says, this is the only Jean-Claude Van Damme movie I saw in a theater. Nice. I did it for the beautiful Yancey Butler and because John Woo was supposedly a great action movie director. If I remember correctly, this is a case of a director being toned down and made to behave by the studio. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's unfortunate. Uh, Dom Cree says, am I right in saying that this would be an absolute hit if it was released in 2023? Anyway, more importantly, what are the top five best film mullets? And if you don't have this Van Damme masterpiece of mullet, and number one or number two on your list, your list is number two. <laughs> well, it's definitely a, this one. It's like, well, a you're you're correct. This yeah. is timeless and can be released anytime. Chuck yes. Norris yeah. and uh, the, the Boz. Hitman, Hitman and the Boz. The Boz, Boz is a good one. The Boz is, a, is gotta, probably my I number one or two. I go with in Masters of the Universe. Yeah, that's a great oh mullet. shit, that's a, a great okay. mullet. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. 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 And uh, Mark Russell Price in uh, Trick or Treat. Okay, then <laughs> uh, Novatu Judoka says, Now, I've never had a mullet, but if I was going to have a mullet, it would be this mullet. Yeah. I didn't grow up with this one, but damn, I wish I did. So much gun foo, riding a dirt bike like a surfboard foo, Wilford Brimley foo, <laughs> punching a snake foo. Yes. It's a true ridiculous gem. Mm-hmm. Yes. I wish I wish I had seen this as a kid, too. Mm-hmm. Travis Legler says, ah, Jean-Claude Van Damme. None of the likability, charm, or talent of Schwarzenegger, Sly, or even Michael Madsen, but still has a cult status. John Woo, on the other hand, now you have my interest. Yeah. Indeed. I feel like JCVD and Chuck Norris really occupy that same space in the sense of like they don't really have a ton of on-screen personality. No, and Steven Seagal. At all, yeah. The, those yeah, are the three guys yep. that were like... They're here that's for the holy reason. trinity yeah. of no personality. Yeah. They're here yeah. for one reason only. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they can um, kick. Right, <laughs> they yeah. can kick and throw a knife around. Yep. yep. Uh, Simon Carter, we haven't done any Steven Seagal no, movies we haven't. on this I've podcast like, at all. He is the outlier, it's I think. Hard of to the hard <laughs> Is that but the best one? We'll do a Mark for we'll death. Do a, we'll do a hard trilogy. Like, yeah. any, like Under Siege is the best. Mo, yeah, you're Under right. Siege. Yeah. Or Siege Executive Under Decision. Si- yeah. Well, he's not even... He, he he gets, he's, he's not in there okay. that, that long. <laughs> Under Siege 2 is actually not bad as well. All right. Uh, Simon Carter says, this is probably my favorite Van Damme movie. Some of the choices are batshit crazy. The snake scene was unexpected and hilarious. <laughs> Solid action throughout, but at the end, that shootout is awesome. I also dig the soundtrack. To this one too. That was Graham Marvell and Kodo collaborated yes. on the soundtrack with a lot of uh, guitar twang, a lot of yeah. twang, twang, a lot guitars. of guitar in there. There was some rocking, like it was awesome. Oh, there yeah. was some good guitar in this when, movie. When he was just doing like normal everyday things, yeah. it was like rocking guitar. Oh, it was yeah, because so it was also yeah. in slow motion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's bad. How else do you know it's badass if the right. guitar does not yeah. tell you? <laughs> Uh, last week we watched a movie called Fallen and Transylvanian Sunscreen said <laughs> That's great <laughs> they said that's, that's a good one <laughs> That took us all out That's a good one <laughs> Well they said I liked the movie better when it was called The Exorcist 3 
Um, <laughs> I forgot what movie we were talking Fallen. about. Fallen. Fallen. Okay, yeah. yeah Fallen. Uh, Joey uh, Blythe good. said, this one has stuck with me since it came out. I tried to find this a while back. I may have to just buy it. John Goodman can do no wrong as long as he isn't Absolutely. Fred Flintstone. I'm currently... <laughs> even that is not his fault. Yeah, even that. He was the best part of that. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. Well, well, Joey says, I'm currently on the In Time episode of your back catalog and found oh. this coincidence oh, wow. funny. The Rolling Stones is perfect because it was considered satanic amongst crazy old religious people. And movies like this don't come around much anymore since the world stopped ending in 2012. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It stopped, uh, it stopped it's figuratively true. ending and then started literally ending. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Uh, R.J. Skorinke said, I saw this in the theaters when it came out. It's a great underrated Denzel movie. No one hardly talks about this movie ever. Agreed. Yeah. Well, there we go. We did. Mm-hmm. We on did. Saturday Night it Free sure Show did. Podcast. Uh, Karate Warrior 2 says, I can't <laughs> remember how this movie ended, but I can sure as hell remember how legit everything evil felt. And I can totally remember how they say Azazel, though. Sean, please do us the uh. honors and give us one like you did the baby. Okay, there we go. That's what we needed for last week. Azazel! <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds like a clown greeting someone. It doesn't work for every title. No, it doesn't work for everything. It doesn't work for everything. I, I gotta, uh, the baby! I, I, just to get us on a better footing there. I can't end on Azazel. All right. uh, the week before that, we watched a movie called What Have You Done to Solange? And mm-hmm. James Mace says, I have a problem with the okay, so we're going to spoil some of the, the, the of uh, what have you done, Solange? Jump about sixty seconds ahead at this point. Uh, he says, "I have a problem with the Elizabeth is a virgin, so our marriage is okay." Plot twist: Frankly, Mrs. Enrique yeah. is missing the big picture. That if Elizabeth <laughs> is a virgin, it's not for lack of trying on Enrique's part. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Jump that girl from the first frame of the film. Hundred exactly. percent valid point. Yes, I absolutely yeah. agree with yes. that. But that was kind of interesting. That was what I thought was surprising. You guys are on her, uh, the wife's side of being like, "Well, she's fighting for her man." And again, I think that is what makes that movie interesting. Is yes. that they. Because that's unexpected. Right. They're expecting her to go like, get out. Yeah. <laughs> but she's like, I actually do love you, and I, we're going to solve this case together. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Carson not the things Snar. they do wrong. It's the things they do right. There was also a scene in which uh, they stumble upon a naked uh, milk uh, oh, the uh, photo, uh, photo shoot, shoot on the boat. Oh, yeah. oh. milk you, advertising. You said naked milk. I'm like, finish this because I don't remember <laughs> yeah. what we're talking about. <laughs> it was, was literally like, that naked girl <laughs> right. in white paint modeling yeah. with milk. milk. Yes. Carson Starr <laughs> says, leave it to milk ads to be extra like that for no reason. He, he, A yes. great got milk ad. <laughs> Uh, Adam Kaler says Rossini seemed like what would happen if Professor Hathaway from Real Genius had been played more sleazy than greedy. The music here is spot on. It put me on edge almost immediately. That was Ennio Morricone. Yes. But one thing I didn't get, Elizabeth's murder in the bathtub was much different than all the others in Method. There was no chase or kidnapping and the actual murder didn't match. I'm probably wrong, but I thought Rossini's wife took the opportunity to take out Elizabeth and be blamed on the other murders and rekindle her marriage. I don't know if that fits the giallo style, but I thought that stuck out like a sore thumb. I like the twist. I like it. I feel like I'm always waiting for that to happen in a giallo movie, like someone take, it, take advantage of the fact that there's killings happening and slip one in. You See, know? So I like that. I think that's that a good make, idea. And who's to say that didn't happen? Because nothing says it didn't. Yeah. yeah. I like that's it. That's my canon now. Yes. But that's I why she's we, okay. She got her revenge. And yeah. it was, but we established on that episode that she didn't get killed like the other ones because she didn't participate in the set. What have you done? to Solange. Oh, she did not do anything to Solange. Yeah, but she was the one who encouraged to go the other way, or yes. whatever. But yeah. Mark Harrison said a remake would be more poignant now after the reversal of Roe versus Wade. If you yeah. didn't like this one, then you'd hate what have they done to your daughters? It's a more uncomfortable watch. That was a second. Oh, in a, a re- more uncomfortable. Yeah. I like how <laughs> as 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 these our podcasts come out, we, we post pictures of the movies and everything, and leave it to Colin to post the most Uncomfortable picture <laughs> from this movie from Solange. The X-ray. The X-ray. But oh, who was? I didn't read it because I think Travis or somebody had already written in. But he said something like, "I saw that picture, and the only thing I could think was, it's the knife is his penis because yeah, of Charles Bronson yeah. in Ten Minutes. <laughs> the knife is his penis. You know penis. what this is yeah. for? It's for jerking off. Yeah, what a great <laughs> fucking movie. Watch Ten Minutes Night for it. Watch Ten Minutes Night. Yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, I think you said creamy yellow slasher so much that you're on some sort of list somewhere. Yep. <laughs> I forgot about that. Creamy. The creamy yellow slasher. Uh, well, thank you <laughs> all on fire tonight. very much for writing, and we really do appreciate it. Now we're going to really go do. around the yeah. table and uh, tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Hard Target, 
starting with. Okay, uh, what did you think of Hard Target? So this is kind of my thing with John Woo movies. Oh. They're so awesome, I don't really know how to talk about them. Other than That's saying, why it's hard to explain uh, the action. Other than saying you're just it's like, really cool. It's awesome. Yeah, like, I just don't know what to say because they're all awesome, and they're all like, if you've seen a John Woo movie, you know what I mean by it's awesome, you know? So, like, I just don't really know what else to say other than, like, you have to watch it because we can't do it justice because it's so over the top in the best it's over the top it's big budget but everyone's committed and it's, it's sincere i like that it's sincere <laughs> because i feel like if movies like this that are being made now aren't always sincere they're a little too winky at the camera or you know and i don't i i hate that movies can be genuine and sincere they don't have to be sarcastic and oh, i hate even it even in a big action movie they can be sincere yeah and i don't know if it's like the deadpool effect or what but mm. like i just hate that like <laughs> random i hate that like that's like a vibe for movies i don't know but i love the sincerity and just like yeah more more is so let's just keep adding more and go maximalist and get crazy and i love that a-list people are always down to participate in this stuff because you know at, f at first when you think about movies like this you think like oh it must be so fun to make but then when you really think about it you're like actually it sounds like a lot of fucking work to make mm -hmm. a movie like this I'm oh. sure you're getting j jerked around in all kinds mm -hmm. of unpleasant physical situations and like yeah. that, oh, I yeah. can't imagine it's like we were talking about with the Evil Dead movies those look absolutely miserable to make like mm -hmm. I wouldn't I, I would not be tough enough to do that. Yeah. So especially John Wood movies are really hard to shoot. Yeah, they exactly. gotta be yeah. like, with all that. Uh, just right. in, just an action scene. Just yeah. so many things because like involved. they have to set it up where it looks good in every angle. Right, because he shoots it in every angle. And yeah. like, can you imagine doing this movie and then a couple months later you call back for reshoots? I might have a breakdown. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't imagine getting called back for reshoots on a movie that was already difficult to shoot. Two so, squibs went off the wrong way. Yeah. We have to reshoot this entire 15 minute action scene. This was done in 72 days. That's crazy. Jeez. That's crazy. And I. I want to see all the cuts. I want to see every cut. I, know, right? I, I want to see the Van Damme cut. <laughs> I need the bootleg guy to have like a box set of all the cuts. That's what I need. The Van Damme cut probably has his ass in it. Yeah. Splits. There's no splits. splits. Definitely yeah. splits. There's yeah. definitely Spl okay, splits. Okay, splits, there's splits with ass. Because there was no splits in this movie, right? which was nuts. And no ass. Yeah, he usually does show his ass too. No ass and no splits. Wow, that is wild. Yeah. That's, um, this is a Lance Hendricks. He's only in a tank top. <laughs> yeah. He's only in a tank top for the last 10 years. Yeah, yeah, he's in a yeah. denim like, shirt what? like Chuck Norris for most of this. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, in a lot of ways, it felt like this was intended for Chuck Norris. But um, <laughs> yeah, you know, you got to watch it. It's a, it's, it's towards the top of my Van Damme movies for sure. I would say, and like I, yeah, he doesn't have any personality, but it, it's like it loops back around to him having personality because <laughs> his not having a personality is, is his personality. personality. So yeah, you have to watch it. It's mandatory, Sean. What do you think? Uh, I also agree that it is uh, mandatory as far as action goes. It's John Woo. It's Jean Claude Van Damme. It's got uh, Lance Henriksen as the fucking evilest bad guy that there ever was, adding cementing his legacy in Hollywood for yeah. me. Um, uh, action galore and good action. You know what's going on. You know where everybody's at. Um, uh, they slap a snake. You have to watch this movie. Yeah. I recommend a hard target. Yeah, it's watch just, that scene and tell me you don't want to watch this. Tell movie. me you don't want to yeah. see the movie yeah. around yeah. that yeah. scene. <laughs> so yeah, I think th this is an obvious like uh, I would say a classic action movie. Like I, uh, you have to watch it. Hard target. Definitely recommend. Colin. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm actually kind of surprised that I haven't gone back to this more in the intervening thirty years. I mean, I remember it made an impression on me when I saw it. I really liked it. Uh, I was kind of lukewarm on Jean Claude Van Damme Aren't at that all? time. I think because I can't remember what he did right before this, but it seemed like there was a lot of the canon stuff and Cyborg, you know. And, mm. uh, Ooh, Cyborg was so boring, especially compared to this movie. Wow, wow, yeah, wow. Yeah, comparatively, yeah. if nothing else. Because it yeah. wasn't too long before that. I don't remember. I don't think this was. Was this Van Damme's first Hollywood? I don't think it was. Did he do something else between Cyborg and. Uh, yeah, he was known at this yeah, well, yeah, for kick was, the canon films, yeah, kickboxer, um, bloodsport, blood, mm -hmm. bloodsport, kickboxer, and uh, and cyborg, I mm -hmm. think, right? Which we've covered all. Wait, yeah. no, we didn't do kickboxer. I haven't done kickboxer, uh, and we haven't done the quest either. Right? Was that we canon? Didn't do, we didn't that do kickboxer. I don't think so. I thought that came no, out. No kickboxer. So. What did we do? The bloodsport. Blood yeah. Oh yeah, we did. The Kumite. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I do remember reading something where I think it was maybe Lance Henriksen said that, you know, like the crew shooting the movie, like they they thought they were making a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. But as it got going, mm -hmm. it's like they realized that they were making a John Woo mm -hmm. movie like his, his, you know, he asserted himself in some kind of way that yep. they were like, 
oh, this guy actually, you know, mm-hmm. this is like a thing to to watch. And if we participate in this, it is going to be something kind of special. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like John Woo, you know, you say that he's the movie sincere. That's kind of what I get from John Woo movies. It's like he has a very clear cut idea of what heroes are and what villains are. And it's simple, but sincere, Mm -hmm. not in an ironic kind of way, you know, which now you kind of watch this. And yeah, I guess, you know, they can't make movies like this anymore because, you know, you can't make a two dimensional hero Mm -mm. like this because this was, you know, kind of like what every uh, 80s action movie hero was like right because right. then you badass. wonder what they're like in their regular day yeah, everyday yeah, yeah. Life. you have no idea right it's yeah. like it's hey he's a dock worker <laughs> but somehow knows how to spring traps and you know like mm-hmm. uh, do uh, spin kicks and shit yeah yeah, yeah yeah he's the greatest you know martial artist that ever lived that you know is basically homeless on and the he's streets bulletproof of, mm-hmm. yeah um so those kind of things were all like cliche at the time and you know i guess we've gone away from them. the thing that you know i was sitting there during that amazing street shootout motorcycle chase car exploding him surfing on the thing i'm like we're watching someone do a superhuman um feat of acrobatic you know uh not endurance or not Mm -hmm. a feat it's Mm -hmm. a you know it's a very physical stunt Mm -hmm. and I'm sitting there and you're kind of like in awe of it. You know, there's like safety things going on, but he is okay at some point surfing on this thing, firing, you know, <laughs> bullets down mm-hmm. the street. Yeah. Jumping and onto a train. And jump. Yeah. There's that's, wow. you know, you know they have yeah. and I'm just sitting there going like, you know, and I don't know, right. This is maybe a personal thing. It's like the superhero movies have ruined these kind of things. For, <laughs> Cause now it's like, you know, you got, superhuman characters doing amazing shit every day of the week and it kind of diminishes like yeah. when these things came out you know it was like you hadn't seen something like this is a real person these were the superheroes crazy stunt you know which is i think why like the mad max movies the john wick movies mm-hmm. why people still appreciate those yeah. uh things when they come around because isn't it refreshing to go back and watch those? yes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and it makes me nostalgic for a time yeah. you know that uh is unfortunately past <laughs> when that twangy guitar started i'm like oh i'm home again you know like, <laughs> nice. uh, felt like a warm hug yeah uh i oh, loved it warm tonight. roundhouse kick to the face yeah. Yeah, it was better than I remembered it being, and I remembered it being pretty good. I mean, I've always thought that it was probably my favorite Jean Claude Van Damme movie and my favorite John John Woo movie that uh, that he made during his Hollywood. I think I still prefer The Killer uh, than Hard Boiled and then Hard Target. You know, uh, so yeah, I, I say you have to check it out. It's uh, yeah, I mean, in the I think True Lies is maybe my favorite action movie of the nineties. I watched that again yeah. the other day, and it's so good. Yeah, because it's, it's got so some good. stuff in there. It's got that the like, Holy and fuck! It's just yeah. got, but it's also got the characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what puts so it over the top. That's like one of the best ones of that mm-hmm. of yeah. that decade. But this one is much smaller in scale. But the stuff they're pulling off here is world class and uh, hard target. You got to see it definitely, Holly. What'd you think? Yeah, so this has been on my list for a while, and I've brought several uh, JCVD movies to this. But I was waiting on this one because it's. The best. I was gonna mm-hmm. say, were you just warming and us up? For- I, yeah, I was because like I can't bring anything else. Yeah, you can't blow your load right off the yeah, bat. Yeah, I can't bring anything else after. Because anything, bring- you, yeah. See, this is what Colin. I think no. I think never mind. Keep going. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about uh, Chuck Norris and the in, in whatever we were watching. Invasion oh, USA. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that I thought of that when we were watching this. I'm like, this is like Invasion USA. Once we watch that, we can't watch any more Chuck Norris. I mean that that yeah. was it. Mm-hmm. And I kind of feel like that way with. Jean Claude Van Damme. We like, retire this is, this is JCVD it. after that. Yeah. The um, only one unless we watch Street be, Fighter. I'm going to throw one out there. Maybe, and it's not it going to top it, but it has other interests. Might be Universal Soldier. Universal Soldier, Soldier. yeah. That's, that's true. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's true. true. That's, yeah. My, that's my other one. I was like, we might be able to pull that one off Like if we wait a few months. like yeah. That one we could probably still cover. Yeah. But yeah, this one's at the top. Universal Soldier's oh, just yeah, underneath yeah, this yeah. for me. Um, but yeah, I've always loved this movie. I grew up watching all of his movies and this one has stayed with me for a long time um i like the tagline is don't hunt what you can't kill <laughs> i love of that uh, any guesses on the budget for this 
It seemed like it had a pretty decent yeah, budget. Yeah, like twenty million of its. I want to say thirty for, in in yeah ninety three because we're going with ninety three so thirty five. I'm gonna say thirty five. Yeah, because we're looking at Rambo three, right? Was like topping it out at eighty eight, right? Yeah. Was mm-hmm. it like that was it was it the first hundred million dollar movie Rambo three? I, think I can't so. remember what we were talking, but the like, first hundred million dollar movie. Yeah, I think it wasn't it Terminator been. two. Ram- Rambo three Rambo was three the, was. Maybe it was eighty eight, and that was the highest yeah. budget like of any movie. At I, the think, time. I think I think that's what it was. I think Terminator Two was yeah. the highest budget when it was made. Okay, okay. so this one, mm-hmm. right? Thirty <laughs> five? No, probably like eh, nine and thirty five thousand. Thirty five million. <laughs> Michaela's right. It was twenty. No, oh, nice. <laughs> and any uh, guesses on what it grossed? <sighs> One hundred twenty. Sixty. Million. Ninety. Seventy four point two. All right, well, maybe. Okay. Money. Yeah, it's still okay. Yeah. It's a modest. Where's mm-hmm. Hard Target 2? There is a Hard Target 2. There is too. a Hard Target 2. Yes. But it, it, With nobody from this one involved, right? Here's the thing it, okay. it's not called Harder Targets, it's Hard Target 2. What? Harder nobody, Target? Harder, harder, harder Targets. No, no. Hard Target 2. Nobody in this <laughs> returned, target. and it came out in 2015. Oh. Ooh. Straight to video. Who's in it? Who, yeah. Casper Van Dien? Probably. Yeah. No, it's the other version of him. <laughs> I, I don't remember who it is, but it's yeah. I was it's, saying, Michaela, get on it. I, I need know, to know. It up. Scott it's, Adkins. Oh, I don't know who that, that makes is. sense. Yeah. I was like, it's, no, Scott Adkins is the directed directed video action fucking dude. Yeah, yeah. I don't is think he? I've seen a lot of his movies, but people fucking love him for his for that stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I I don't know anything about it. I know it was nothing. It's he's like a he's in the new John Wick movie. Scott Adkins. Yeah, I think you know, he's well, like yeah. a former MMA fighter. It, I don't know. It's Whatever. I have not heard of any other movie he's been in. These all oh no, they're like all movies. they're yeah. all direct to video yeah. stuff, all streaming yeah. stuff, all Redbox stuff. That's that's what he does. He did that's a movie called we... Accident Man. <laughs> yeah, oh, God. he did. That's terrible. But yeah, yeah, no. So obviously, this is my this is my favorite Van Damme movie. Um, it it's, it tops them all for me. I think we can do Universal Soldier, but this one is my favorite, mm. and uh, for obvious reasons, we talked about all of them already. So yeah, this movie <laughs> yes. is spectacular. I love it. It's it's from start to finish. It is nonstop. I mean, I was like grinning the whole time we were watching this movie. It's just I could, fun. when we got like ten minutes into the thirty minutes of the last action scene, I was like. <laughs> yeah. I can't. I can't keep Jesus. up. This is a, a sensory overload. Yeah, it's spectacular. There's, I have, I have no complaints about this movie. It's amazing. I wish movies like this still existed. Um, I think the closest we get is John Wick, but it still doesn't have that panache like this has. So yeah, I'm obviously gonna recommend it. It's fantastic. I don't know why you haven't already seen it, but you should watch it right now. It just makes me want to go back and watch all the lethal weapons. I don't know why. That was mm-hmm. just that was my era of just cops and mm-hmm. shit blowing up and gunfights and Mel Gibson throwing a spin kick or two. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, the good old days. Another, the good that, old days. For you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Lethal weapons and diehards. Right. And that, was, yep. <laughs> that generation, right? Yep. Uh, Simpler okay. times. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess that means that you're contractually <laughs> obligated to watch Hard Target because we all recommended mm-hmm. it. Next Indeed. week we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Michaela. What are we going to watch next week? Things are heating up, guys. Oh. It's summertime. Oh. So, you know, I love a theme for the summer. Oh, all right. So we're going to do summer slaycation, and we're going to watch <laughs> destination horror movies. Oh, boy. Oh, and we're going to okay. start with The Ruins from I 2008. Knew it. <laughs> as soon as you said that, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Get, uh, okay. The Ruins. Yep. The Ruins. The I've never ruins. seen this. I've never I've seen I've not either. seen this. Okay. Sean okay. Ashmore, Jenna Malone. Yeah. I remember the trailer a lot. They're going to a, it's a Mayan temple. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. All right, the ruins. See, yeah. there's a reason I skipped these back in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, we yeah, all end up yeah, showing yeah. them here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the ruins next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>